one of the key aspects of a Kanban strategy is improving the system, improving your workflow. So after you've defined what your workflow is, you've written down how you're going to uh, 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 work your system, and you've started actively monitoring uh, the work that is underway, you'll hopefully start seeing patterns. If we're using the metrics from the flow metrics from a Kanban strategy, then we should be able to see when things are sitting around for too long and they're too old. We should be able to see patterns of delivery. We should be able to see um, groupings of things that are perhaps not quite where we expect them to be on the graphs that we might use uh, to visualize that data. And that allows us to ask more interesting questions. It allows us to lift the carpet and see in the dark. See in the dark, that's a great, a Kanban strategy is like a torch, shining the light in the darkness of your system to see where things are broken, where things aren't working as optimally as they could be, to see what's going on where it would be opaque normally. Um, it's, this is especially true for teams doing Scrum. Scrum has no metrics at all. Um, and the metrics that I would always recommend would be the Kanban flow metrics, right? Because Kanban is designed as something that can be used to monitor any system. It's a monitoring tool. It's not the system itself. It's the tool you use to observe the system. Think about if you were building software and you wanted to understand which features of your product your customers were using so that you could choose which parts of the product to continue to invest in and which not, how would you do that? Well, you'd need to put some hooks into your application and collect a bunch of telemetry and then analyze the data, right? So you can see what's going on. You need to increase transparency. And a Kanban strategy is that tool for any system. So regardless of whether Scrum is your system, that might be your starting point, or that might be where you jump to, right? You might start from over here, but you jump to Scrum. Or you've got a system that you just made up, right? That's totally cool. That's what lots of people do. We have a system that we just made up. Then we can use Kanban to gain insights and understanding on what's going on in this system by monitoring it, by collecting some telemetry on how our work happens so that we can see better what's going on. It's, 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 I don't understand why teams try and manage their system from a position of opacity, right? They can't see what's going on. They're looking into the fog of war and they can't see the problems. And a Kanban strategy, and particularly the flow metrics part of a Kanban strategy and the visualization of the work, remove that fog of war so you can see what's going on. You can actually see when things aren't working properly. And it's obvious, look, here's a problem here. I can see it, it's visually triggering my brain and I can see it. So hopefully being able to see all these problems will encourage you to actually do something, actually make a change. And we're effectively not implementing a Kanban strategy if we're not improving the workflow, right? Impro improving and making changes to the system in order to see the numbers change in a more positive or more likable manner, right? So Kanban supports continuous improvement by giving you the, 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 the torch to shine on the problem, the view through, it's, it's your radar that lets you see through the fog of war and be able to make better decisions. If you're struggling to create a pool-based system of work, then we can help you. We provide world-class Kanban training from Pro Kanban, as well as consulting and coaching for teams trying to implement a Kanban strategy. If you're a Scrum team, then uh, we always recommend bringing in flow metrics as a complementary practice and have Kanban classes from Scrum.org as well.